Hello everybody, this is Highlander from MTG Cardsmith doing another custom Magic the Gathering card review and I got my special guest Island Snake with me today. Hey everybody. And we are reviewing a card by TGBC for a set Coronella. This one is called Feline Frost Dragon of Old. This is a five blue blue, so eight mana legendary human dragon. I see the tail, so I guess. Uh, and it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, so 7 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's see what we got here. At rare. Um, bio Augment. Two blue blue. All right, so more Bio Augment. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped by an effect you control, that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next two untap steps. Oof. Yeah. Upon augmentation, tap three target creatures and opponent controls. Wait, so that that's pretty good. It is very good, yeah. Um, can you tell me more about Agrelian? Uh, okay, some like character flavor text. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, so... It seems extremely ridiculous. The well, effect. it does. It does cost seven, and you have to pay four more for the bio augment. So, like, I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't hate it that much, but I do have a few issues here. Um, so, th okay. So this is a dragon, but it doesn't have flying. I guess that. I guess that's okay, considering she doesn't have any wings in the art. Well, now yeah. she, now she does. So she can. Yeah. There we go. She can probably fly, though. But yeah, in the art, she's like in her humanoid form. Whatever. Yes. So. so it seems a little weird to have a dragon without flying, but whatever. Um, okay, so whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped by an effect you control... Okay. That is the part where I think it's too strong. It's... It's a okay. Again, let me let me try and do a little bit of rewording here because it's a little confusing the way this is worded. So let's go bio augment to blue blue, and then whenever a creature okay whenever a spell or ability you you control would or, or you control taps. A creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next two untap steps. Uh, when Feline becomes augmented, tap three target creatures and opponent uh tap three target creatures and opponent controls okay all right so i find it's interesting that this that this one doesn't have like a thing that happens when the the counter is removed or any of that stuff where, where this is like you would want to remove the, the counter so you can put another one on right that's that's true yeah that's true but uh, of course if you remove the counter it dies so it doesn't actually work um oh is that is that is that the case for all bio augments or just that yeah one? yeah that is the case for all of them so when you when you see reminder text like we saw when the, with the previous card it, it it applies for for all of them okay. um Okay, so this card I I am okay with, but I do have a few issues with this one. Um, so I okay, so so with the tapping thing, it is very strong. But this is a seven mana set. This is a seven mana card, so it should be strong. It's also legendary and a rare, um, but. So I, I don't mind the ability. However, I I don't know how I feel about during its controller's next two untap steps. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's two of them. Also, it doesn't give you a um, 
It doesn't provide like a way to track that. It, yeah, like, it doesn't it, put counters on anything. That's exactly my. That's exactly my point. Yeah. Is the reason you generally don't see things like that is because you have to keep track of how many of like how many turns something's tapped down, and it becomes really confusing, especially if you end up like staggering these things. So it's like. Okay, so let's say you play her and you buy augment her and now you tap three things. Okay. It goes to the player's next turn and they're like, well, my thing doesn't untap. Goes back to your turn. Now you tap another creature they control, or maybe the same creature they control, right? And now that's on that's for the like the next two. So then it goes to the next it goes back to the player and then you're like, okay, so not still nothing untaps. Goes back to you. You tap something else, it goes back, and now it's like, okay, well, I have, like, five tapped creatures, and which ones untap and which ones stay tapped? Like, yeah, I to... actually think that this card needs to have, like, some kind of, like, counter mechanic to track that, and if they're going to do that. Yes, or I think I think what's a better thing to do is just, just make it so that they don't untap during one untap step. I mean... So the two is, I think, what makes this card, like, crazy. It, um, it, here's a rules question, too. Yeah, um, yeah. Because my, my the reason I thought I, I said it was like it seemed like really strong was because there's a lot of effects that tap creatures, right? And sometimes they're like um, not very expensive, and they could be th repeatable things that you could do. Um, and so the question is: is can you tap an an already tapped creature? Yeah. So so if I have a like sorcery that says tap target creature, and if it's, if it's already tapped because of this effect, could I tap it and then reset the counter? Yes, you you can. Okay. So if you had like a creature that's like I tap a creature to tap another creature, you could like stun lock two things forever. Yes. With okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. I, so I figured you'd actually have to manually tap it, but I guess not. No. Yeah. So so I I, I think I think so for e even ignoring ignoring like str power reasons, I think this should only be one untap step for for uh, for complexity reasons. It's just it's just too much to keep track of uh, if you're doing two untap steps. It does I'll also exile it. it <laughs> yeah, I know. Fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> it, it 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 is also extremely strong. I think um, so. Yeah, I, like I would I would be a little bit less worried if it was if if it was like if this said like when feline becomes augmented tap three target creature and opponent controls they don't untap during their controllers next two untap steps i would be a little bit less uh upset about that because then at, at least they only have to track those those creatures those three creatures and then you, they're done but this is like anytime anything becomes tapped by one of your things there's all kinds of like sort of bookkeeping you have to do and and i think that's mm -hmm. just too too complex and it's also probably a little bit too powerful. So, um, so what yeah. If we, uh, what if we just had the, like, instead of the two untap, make uh, effects you control tap an additional creature. Uh, that's also so it's like that's also something you could do. Yeah. So that way you don't have to track more, but it still benefits like the, your other tap effects. Which I, I think what this card wants to do is like, uh, you know modify your like you would build a deck around like this is your win condition kind of where it's like now that this card's out you're stun locked um i mean you can remove this card so it's not that that hard but i don't know i i, I do kind of like this card but it does yeah. seem very potent yeah it, i think this i mean it's so again it's seven mana so like at seven you you, you want something that's quite strong um i think i think the 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 untap the the untap for two turns I think is a little too much, um, like I, I I think I think at that point so so I think either you you go with you go with this version that I've I've written here, or excuse me I didn't write it there, um, I I think you either only only make the the creature be tapped for one of your opponent's untap steps, or alternatively what you could do is you could say like. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes untapped by oh, so let me let me read it this way. Whenever well, you could exile for one turn and then come into play tapped, that would uh, have the same effect, right? Yes, though you, you don't really want to do that on cards that have enter the battlefield effects because then you like, oh, give them yeah. an extra bonus. But here here's here's an idea. So what about something like this? So whenever a spell or ability you control taps a, 
a creature an opponent controls, put an ice counter on it. Yeah. That creature doesn't untap for as long as it has an ice counter on it. So you could just like permanently lock something down, basically. Oh, I thought you were gonna like have it like remove one every turn, but yeah. I mean, I, I, think, I think it thaws out. You could you could do that, but like, I mean, this is definitely more powerful. But at least there's no bookkeeping to do. Like at least you just have like an ice counter. You know what I mean? So I think this is one of these cards that. Or or, or you could do what you're saying, where it's like, you say like put. Two ice ca ice to put two ice counters on it. Uh, that okay, that creature doesn't untap for as long as now. Uh, and then you say, "Oops." At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player removes an ice counter from each creature that has one. Creature they control. Right, so then it's like, at least at least it makes the bookkeeping a little bit easier in this case. Oh, yeah, so I think that that like this is kind of just uh, a discussion we can have real quick. I don't know how you feel about this, but it's like, you the car works as written, like ha how they have it, like it functions. But removing the flavor text and providing additional mechanical bo bookkeeping is probably worth it in this case. Right? Oh like, yeah, for sure, uh, absolutely. And th this card is also not f formatted properly. I think because of the flavor text, because like there needs to be a space between this and this, which there isn't, and there needs to be a space between this and this, which there isn't. And all you really get out of it is, can you tell me more about a Grelian? Which is like not really that. It's 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 more that's like flavor that's like a different type of flavor text than what usually I think appears on Magic cards. It is. I, I don't I don't mind it, but like this isn't like. This isn't really telling me a lot. I mean, it's telling me that there's a place called Agrelian and she's from it, basically. And that this character gets to meet Feline. Uh, so, you know, that, that that's kind of cool and all, but I, it's not it's not like I don't know. It's not like the most it's not amazing. Worth it. It's yeah, it's, it's not, not worth like having to track the two untapped things. Yeah, itself. it's not it's not worth that. It's not worth uh, making the card formatted incorrectly because that's distracting so so yeah um okay and i i also wanted to say one other thing about about this uh design is so this okay so bio augment the previous card that we saw with also bio, cost four. bio augment it also costed four but it had like a permanent effect on the creature it was like the, from now on, this creature's augmented. Therefore, you know it. It um, yeah, it, yeah. It, it has vigilance. Here, it's like the creature becomes augmented, and you get a one-time effect, and like that, you don't get like a permanent effect from it, which is odd to me. It's a little odd, yeah. Like Almost like like a limit break instead of like. Yeah, like what, what what you could do is you could make the augment. She should probably be. She should probably fly when she's augmented. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say the exact same thing. Is you you like make the augment a little bit more um, uh, more expensive, and you you give her flying when she's augmented or something like that. Um, and you could you could still keep the upon augmentation. Or what you could do is you could say like, you know, as long as she's augmented, whenever she attacks, tap a creature and opponent controls. You know, something like that. She's like breathing ice on something. Um, so anyway, the, the, those are, those are kind of my issues with this card. Um, Despite there, everything, though, I actually like this card. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I I think it's cool. It's like it's like a it's like a it's like a a, a tap lord kind of. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I like this card better than than the other cards we've seen for sure. It just has a few issues. I think that 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 could could use a little bit of fixing up. So. Um, what, what, what rating do you give this card? Uh, so I like ice themed. I like pole arms. Uh, I, I think the, I, so I, I'm fine with the art. Like, I think it's cool. Uh, I, I'm leaning towards like a six or seven. 
I think I'm gonna go with a seven. Okay. I'm I've not... never seen a card that like is trying to like make you not untap for like two turns. And I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, um, yeah, I. I uh... and it's very blue. Like this feels like just like no fun allowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give this one a six. I think. I, I think this one has a lot of potential. Uh, but I think it just has a few too many issues to to hit the uh, hit the B range. Um, so you know, formatting. So we got formatting issues. We've got um, the we've got some wording issues. We've got the bookkeeping uh, issue that we mentioned. Um, we've got the augmentation not providing a permanent bonus which i think is just a little bit of a, of a miss um so yeah i, I got uh, there's some strikes against it but i like the concept of this card a lot so i think i think this card has a lot of potential i think if you modify this one a little bit fix a couple things up this could be this could be a really cool card so read cool so that's our review of feline frost dragon of old see you next time